Hey everyone, this is a complete beginner tutorial of Zmodeler brush. It is a poly modeling tool in ZBrush. Unlike Maya or Blender modeling tool, it has its own unique sets of tools for those who wants to do hard surface modeling in ZBrush. It looks daunting to use it first, so I will break down the general terminology of how to use this brush properly and comfortably. Tell you the fastest way to jump directly into it. We'll tell you some tips and tricks along the way and in the end we will end up making this space gun. So guys, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Now ask yourself the very first question, what are the requirements of using the Zmodeler brush? Well, a mesh with good topology and basic understanding of polygroups. With these two combinations in mind, you can block out and create any hard surface model in ZBrush. If you press Shift F, you can see that this sphere is very dense. Therefore, I don't use the Zmodeler brush with that many polygons. So I'll hit W and open the gizmo. Click on this gear icon and you can see all these basic primitives there. I will select this cylinder 3D. Now you can see this cylinder is very low poly and has a great topology. I love these basic primitives in Gizmo 3D. Now how to use a Z modeler brush. Press B, Z and select the Z modeler brush. Now hover your cursor and you can highlight the vertex, edge and the whole poly. Make sure you are in polyframe mode. Now if you press spacebar. While your cursor is placed on any of this, you would see this command center. Pressing the spacebar on the edge, this command center appears. As well as placing on the polygon, hitting the spacebar, the same command center appears but with different actions and target. Now this command center is the ultimate hub for every tool at your disposal for polymodeling. It is divided into three sections. The very top here are the polygon actions just like in any other modeling software. Most of these commands must be very familiar to you. Like this extrude for example. Selecting the extrude while the polygon is selected, click and drag onto this polygon will extrude the surface. Again, hover the cursor on the face, hit the spacebar and select the inset. It will inset the face. It works the same with the edges. The insert action is selected on the edges. Clicking and dragging will add those poly loops. Now let's understand the second section of the command center. Although I won't be going into details on every one of these actions, I will tell you about those which I will use it with the Z modeler brush most of the time. The second section will let you choose the target of the mesh. For example, we were only extruding a single face before. But what if I wanted to extrude the whole region? So while the extrude is selected, I will change the target from a single poly to a flat island. What it will do is, it will look for the flat region on the mesh while the cursor is pointing on one and will extrude this only region. So these are the target of the action you will be going to use. Selecting the action, then selecting a target, will it be a poly loop? Will it be targeting a certain polygroup? For example, now we have multiple polygroups. I want to target this polygroup. I want the extrude to only happen on this colored polygroup. So I will change the target action from flat island to polygroup all. Clicking and dragging now will only extrude the selected polygroup. Remember I said earlier the combination of good topology mesh and polygroups. This is what I meant. The Zmodeler tool could be a very useful tool if used with polygroups. Now the third section of the command center are modifiers. It will not be available for every action but to make you understand I will change the edge selection from insert to bevel. If I use the bevel on this edge now, it will bevel creating one row at the moment. But what if I wanted to have two rows or even four? Well the modifier will let you just do that. I will quickly change the modifier of the bevel to two rows and it will create two rows. The same option can be chosen for four rows or even eight. Modifiers will be available for most of the actions, if not all. If I give my personal preference, I rarely use modifiers. I just don't see any use of this myself. You could experiment and try out yourselves. In some situations, these modifiers can come in really handy. Another very interesting feature in Zmodeler brush, which I like the most and often use it, is the action QMesh. QMesh can create booleans like holes really quickly without destroying the geometry. I'll show you. For example, how it works, if I add poly loops this side and on the other side of the cylinder and now clicking and dragging to the very end and see how it created a hole in the mesh, also creating and bridging up the nice geometry. It works with any mesh and with any command. For example, I will select the inset and create this edge loops quickly on both sides. Then I will quickly give these two polys a polygroup by holding Alt on the keyboard and clicking it while the Z Zmodeler brush is selected. Then selecting the Q mesh and action polygroup all. It will look for the same polygroup and use Q mesh accordingly. See how I created this clean cut really quickly and efficiently? Please note that in order to use Q mesh effectively, you have to tell the Q mesh the starting 
starting side and the end side. For example, I have the poly loop on this side of the mesh but the other side does not have it. So when I use the QMesh this time without adding the poly loop on the other side, it will look for something to bridge and weld up the points anyway, creating this weird geometry which I don't recommend having it. So always add some kind of poly loops on the other side as well to give something to QMesh to work from it. Now this is the basic functionality of the remodeler brush. We will use what we have learned and create this space gun really quickly. I will first block out the gun with basic primitives. This is how I begin creating any character or the hard surface model in ZBrush. It is my understanding that blocking out the subject first with basic primitives could help you see the design much better, which can result in boosting your confidence and help you see how your model will turn out to be. The basic forms, proportions and the silhouette plays a vital role in designing anything. So you might want to spend as much time at the blockout stage. For the blockout, I go from big to small. It is a common practice in any medium and not just sculpting. I will highlight the big shapes of this gun, which is the shape of the nozzle, the round body and the grip beneath it. Now I have this basic cylinder. To get it, open the gizmo and click the gear icon. The primitives are here as I told you earlier. I will select the Z modeler brush and delete this edge loop by holding Alt and click it. It is a shortcut for deleting any edge loop while the modeler is selected. I will scale it down and duplicate the same cylinder. I am keeping it very low poly. I am just trying to block out the main shapes. Not worried about any details or so. I am adding an insert IMM brush then I will convert it into the polysphere from the Gizmo 3D. I do this often. Use an IMM brush to insert the mesh quickly then convert them. Now I am adjusting the shape and the proportion of the sphere so it can match the reference. Adding a cube real quick. Again same procedure I will convert it using the Gizmo 3D primitives. This time I am using some gizmo modifiers to reduce the poly loops of the cube. I am keeping it to the very basic, scaling and matching the proportion really quickly. I will select the Z modeler brush and use the action move for the edge and will just move it up, just trying to match the design. Now that we have some basic shape of the gun, I will move ahead and work on the nozzle. I will select the move action from the Z modeler and move this flat surface a little bit. Then we we'll scale the edge loop using the scale command from the Z modeler and selecting the edge loop in the modifier until it matches the concept. I will now insert the edge loop after selecting the Z modeler brush again and selecting the insert. The insert option is for inserting edge loops. Then I will select and use flat inner. What it will do is it will look for the inner part of the any edge loop geometry and extrude accordingly. I will hit D to turn on the dynamic subdiv. If anyone has used Blender, there are modifiers in Blender and there is one called subdivision modifier. It will give you the preview of how the mesh will look if it will have multiple subdivision levels. Adding the necessary poly loops really quickly. So our mesh looks solid in the dynamic subdiv. Remember it is the same as giving it real subdivision levels but it is only a preview. So the basic geometry is just for the blockout. You would need to add more poly loops in order it to support multiple subdivision levels. Now I'll make this pipe thing hanging on its back. I will use the curve tube brush by pressing B, C and selecting it. How it works is I will just click and drag and try to make the exact shape. My intention is to just match the silhouette to a concept as close as possible. I can increase or decrease the radius of the curve by changing my cursor size, doing and undoing until I am satisfied with the design. Now that we have our basic shapes blocked out, I will quickly recap the proportions of the model. Proportions play a vital role, it can create and it can also break the design. This cap here needs to be a little big and this pipe thingy here needs to be less in length here. I will scale up the nozzle a little bit and quickly reduce the length of this pipe. The design is important. Staying true to the concept is the key to achieving a good design. I will add the cube real quick using the gizmo to change it and reducing those poly loops. I am thinking of changing the style of the grip, trying to make this more angular this time. I will use the QMesh command to create the hole on this cube. And for that, I will first insert both sides by giving it a polygroup and using a polygroup all action for the insert command. Selecting and using the QMesh really quick. As you can see, it created a hole with a good topology. I will use the move brush to move these points and add a trigger using the sphere. I will select this handle, hit D to turn on the dynamic subdiv and quickly adding edge loops to support it giving polygroups by holding ALT because I want to extrude this part creating a slided bottom we see on most of the guns and will extrude this part. Adding necessary loops on the remaining part of the handle, I am trying to stray off the design a little bit. I am always experimenting with stuffs to see what looks good and what does not. Now if I want, I can just quickly insert this area of the handle. I will then insert using the polygroup ALT target and extrude it 
with the same polygroup all target. You can see this tool can be very powerful if you use it with polygroups. Now I need to add details on this part of the gun as well. I will add the necessary poly loop so when we extrude it we would have this curved shape extrusion. I will now add this screws over the gun. I have just the right method for that. I will use nano mesh brush to add the screws over the body but for that we would need a good topology. A topology with good poly loops. I will mask the sphere on both sides and will remesh it using the keep groups option on. What it will do is it will look for the polygroups and z remesh, creating polygroups to those areas where we have given it a polygroup. Also, using the polish crisp edges slider to smooth out the polygroups on the sphere. Now, for the base mesh of the nano mesh brush, I will use a low poly sphere and squash the geometry. To squash the geometry, holding Alt while the move gizmo is selected and just clicking and dragging, and the geometry will squash on the desired direction. I will position the mesh, press B, and select Create Insert Mesh Brush to create the IMM because we would need to create an IMM brush first in order to make it a nano mesh brush. While the newly created IMM brush is selected, press B and click create nano mesh brush. I will select the body, select the Z model brush and quickly give this poly loop a different poly group. Now watch carefully. Press B and select the newly created nano mesh brush. It will be named as Z modeler 1. Select it. This brush works like a Z modeler tool. Hover the cursor and press spacebar and select polygroup all. Click and drag and it will add the nano mesh brush using this target. Created the screws we wanted. Fast and easy. I will quickly select the tube. Same procedure as we did with the body. Mask in polypaint both ends of the tube. Then Z remesh it while having the polygroup option selected. It will give us some nice loops around the tube. I will use it to extrude these loops. Now giving it a quick poly loop all around the tube while polygroup action is selected. I will extrude these parts creating a nice design of the tube like we see normally on a hard surface pipes. I will now extrude it with polygroup all after selecting the Z model brush and will hit D to turn on the dynamic subdiv. What I can do now is insert poly loops on each of the individual pieces which we have created earlier to make it support high subdivision levels, creating crisp edges on all of these extrusions. Looks good this way. Now painting a cylinder and creating a platform for the top bulb of this gun. I am using move with flat island and scale with flat island as a target. I will also use this platform which I am creating on the tube we created, the start point and the end point. I will append a sphere real quick and start adjusting it to shape it like a bulb. Piece by pieces, we are getting near to our objective. I will go ahead and make the board with the clock now. I will first block out the board and then use clock dynamics to make it project to the body of the gun. I will hit D and apply the dynamic subdiv and place the dynamic palette on the sidebar here so we can use it comfortably. Now the cube is selected. I will click collision volume. What it will do is it will make the selected object collide with others using the close simulation. So I will use the gizmo tool and try to collide it. But it is not working. Why? Because I would need to change the transpose from normal to transpose close. Hit B T and I will select the transpose close. Then I will use the gizmo tool again and try to do the same step. See how it collided with the mesh like a cloth? It is a great tool for the projection of the mesh. I will again switch back to the normal transport tool to adjust the mesh. I will add the necessary loops around the cylinder species. I will duplicate one of the cylinder and position it on the board. I will polygroup the inner part of the circle and extrude it with the polygroup all action. I will duplicate the same mesh and position it accordingly. I will append a cube, split it with mass points and scale it down making it a shape of a needle we see on the clock. It's a stylized version so we won't have to add too many details, at least for what I am doing right now. You can go ahead and experiment yourself, add other stuffs if you want. The steps would be exactly the same, block out the basic primitives and use Z modeler to add loops, extrude, Q mesh and all other stuffs. You can even go ahead and make a completely different gun using the same steps. I went ahead and poly painted the gun quickly. If you haven't watched my poly paint beginner video, I highly recommend you watch it. Now remember these screws we added, they aren't clickable at the moment because we would still have to to apply the nano mesh brush on the mesh. For that, click on the nano mesh palette, it will be grayed out because we have to select that mesh first on which we have used the nano mesh. Selecting the body, clicking on inventory and selecting one to mesh. I am not liking this trigger, it looks too organic. What I will do is polygroup it on both sides using the white polygroup by selecting Z modeler brush and holding Alt. And then Z remesh it using the keep group option. It will use the polygroup as a direction to create the loops. Z remesh is a very powerful tool for auto topology adding necessary loops to make those edges sharp. I am almost finished with the model, selecting that ring, 
applying dynamic subdiff and then giving subdiffs again to make it more smooth. It was a basic primitive before. Selecting the screws and giving it a grey polypen. And guys this is it. This is my beginner's introduction to the Z Modeler brush. I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial. If you want me to cover complex subject and want more advanced hard surface modeling in Z brush, let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, don't forget to drop a like and do subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.